The following video is intended to provide a step-by-step -step guide to chair-side bonding of the exceed bracketing trays. To ensure trays fit, the interval between impression taking, whether digital or analog, and bonding should not be more than 4 weeks. It is always recommended to bracket both arches at the same session. If, however, the upper and lower arches are bonded separately, use a retainer when the gap between the placement appointments is more than 2 weeks. Exceed offers two types of bonding protocols, clean and pad adjusted. In the first type, the bracket pad is positioned at a distance of 0.1 mm from the tooth. That space will later be blocked once the adhesive is applied. The second protocol, pad adjusted bonding, is employed only in Exceed TX orders, whenever the effective bracket torque has to be corrected to produce a desired post-treatment outcome. Torque compensation is enabled by maintaining a space of up to 1.5 mm between the bracket base and the tooth in the virtual bracketing plane, and later in the resulting transfer trays. To fill the gap and generate the necessary adjustment, a slightly greater quantity of adhesive has to be applied on the bracket pad. A sticker inside the exceed container will include instructions to that effect. Along with setting up all the necessary chair side materials, it is always helpful to prepare the trays in advance, before the patient is escorted to the chair. In complex or severely crowded cases, the trays may be fitted in the patient's mouth prior to preparation to plan the insertion path. To begin preparing the trays, dip a micro brush into an alcohol-based sealant and dab the back of each bracket lightly. Do this for both trays. One dip easily covers three to four brackets. Next, apply a 3M Transbond Supreme Low Viscosity or Reliance LCR on all bracket pads. Use only a small amount to prevent flash, unless indicated differently in the extra adhesive instructions. Once applied, it is very important to use a filling instrument to work the composite into the mesh. It is advisable to use more composite on the molar tubes due to the size of the pads. When done, place the tray in the black, light-resistant container to prevent premature activation of the agent. Then, repeat the process for the second tray. Now is the time to call the patient to the chair. Begin to promise the patient's teeth, being careful near the gingiva to prevent bleeding. Then, rinse well to remove all polishing agent. Place the dry angles and dry fill system to secure a moisture-free area. Using the air water syringe, blow the air towards the gingiva so that all the moisture is off the tooth. Once dry, the teeth should be etched with phosphoric acid. This process should not take more than 40 seconds, so it is important to move fast, making sure that the central part of each tooth is covered. When completed, rinse with water for 10 seconds per tooth. Now, use suction and then the warm air tooth dryer to remove as much moisture as possible and obtain the desired frosty surface on the teeth. Please do not use the air from the air water syringe because tiny particles of water and oil coming from the instrument can potentially contaminate the teeth. At this point, you are ready to place the bonding agent. Use a micro brush to dub each tooth with a 3M adipose single bond tube or a similar material. After 3 to 4 teeth, reapply the agent and repeat. Try to apply the agent gently to prevent damage to the enamel rods. Following etching, the rods are fragile and can break if the agent is applied too forcefully. Using a gentle dabbing motion circumvents this risk. In addition, avoid long dragging motions, especially when you get close to the gums, to prevent any saliva contamination. Sitting is next. On both arches, you will notice the black placement mark at the midline to help with tray's orientation. For the upper tray, Use a straight in and a straight up motion. When you feel the tray is seated, use two fingers and push all the way up. 
applying force only in the occlusal direction. The tray is now ready to be cured. Start with the molars on one side and then move to work on the molars on the opposite quadrant. Do so for an occlusal angle for at least 10 seconds per tooth and then at least 10 seconds more from the buckle aspect. You can use two curing lamps simultaneously as shown here to shorten the process. Continue curing the rest of the teeth as indicated before. Please be sure to use the light shield on the curing light or a protective eyewear. Now is the time to release the heart tray. To do this, place the scaler inside the brick point in the back and push downwards. Once you have the initial disengagement, use your fingers to entirely remove the tray. Repeat the entire curing cycle again, 10 seconds occlusally and 10 seconds gingivally per tooth. To avoid confusion, perform each step in the exact same order as you did before. At this point, you want to remove the dry angles from the patient's mouth. If needed, use water from the air water syringe to loosen them. When curing is done, gently pull on the lingual side in the back to remove the soft tray. Peel the tray along the incisal edges of the teeth, keeping equal force on the buccal and lingual. Don't pull too hard, but use an adequate amount of pressure. Now is the time to bond the lower arch. Etch, rinse completely, use suction to remove excess moisture, dry with the warm air tooth dryer, apply the bonding agent, sit the trays and cure occlusally and gingivally. Remove the hard shell, cure again and then remove the soft layer. Once the trays are off, check each bracket with a scaler to ensure bond strength. Then. Remove flash with a polishing burr and check interproximally with floss. Before the wires are inserted, this may be a perfect time to call the clinician and confirm the placement. The patient will feel like everyone is part of the process and may ask any necessary questions.